Time to shine today, Podcast Varsity Squad. This is Scott Ferguson. If I sound out of breath, it was on my part that we had some technical difficulties, but we worked our way through it. And I'm here with my really good friend, uh, Richard Friesen. I mean, this this gentleman has uh, he's been under high pressure situations, uh, um, not like brain surgery or anything like that, but maybe uh, maybe it's just as important with with people's money, you know. And after thirty years in the financial world, trading on the floors of major exchanges, building a trading firm as a therapist, reviewing thousands of financial assessments and coaching traders, financial professionals, and entrepreneurs in groups and private sessions, my good friend Richard realized that something is missing. You know, his training as a therapist opens the door to the deeper drivers of financial and money behaviors that no longer serve us. Yet, we seem to repeat them over and over again. Mm -hmm. And my guy, Richard, here is from Live Free Investments. He's uh, authored a fantastic book, which I'm going to do a five-book giveaway, but you have to listen to the end. And I'm just so blessed to have Richard here. And Richard, if you don't mind, please introduce yourself to the Time to Shine Today podcast for our students. But first, what's your favorite color and why? Oh my gosh, purple. Purple. Uh, it used to be blue, but then on the floors of the exchange, everyone had kind of standard jackets. Yeah. And I wanted my firm to stand out. So we got purple jackets. Boy, did they give us a lot of crap, you know, tease us a lot. But man, you could see us anywhere on the floor. Bro, and purple is royal and regal, right? One. And if you're getting sure. biblical about it, everything in the book of Numbers was all about the 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 purple was the the royal <laughs> garment. But also it's a mix between red and blue. And some of this worked on the floor, bro. You probably had a little bit of the red moments and the blue moments. So that's oh my gosh, we had <laughs> moments. <laughs> that, that's all seriously, my friend, thank you so much for being here and for your patience today. Um, I, I really want to kind of dig into your roots, kind of like where you started and how you worked up, made the decision to work on a trading floor in that high pressure situation. And then, you know, how you're now really helping people unlock their mindset with regards to the monetary side of life. Yeah, I started when um, I was uh, a glass blower originally. Wow. And uh, I had a friend, Joe Ritchie, who went from a college friend, and he started trading. He says, hey, come join us. But here's an internal limitation I had. <clears throat> I don't deserve that. I don't belong there. I'm not smart enough, good enough or whatever. So I said, I'm going to go to Merrill Lynch. I'll work for them for a couple of years. I'll really get a background. Then I'll go go work with you. But all through my career, the major problems were internal limitations all the way up. Wow. You said internal <clears throat> limitations, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. And what, was, what was your steps then really to you know, unlock that side and say, hey, I'm good enough to do this. This is what, yeah. you know, maybe not born to do, but something that I know that I can do. Yeah, it's it was in April of 1995. And I had, was the middle of the night. And I heard this voice. It woke me up. And this voice said, Rich, you're only worth $200,000 a year. I looked around the room. <laughs> My wife was sleeping beside me. Nobody else was there, but this was a powerful internal voice. Now, the question then becomes, how do we make those internal voices explicit so that we can understand better what our internal limitations are? So I got up, it was the middle of the night, and I drove across the Golden Gate Bridge to the floor of the Pacific Exchange, where I was an independent market maker. And there I sat on the steps outside. The, it was still locked, and when the doors opened, I went inside, and normally Rich Friesen, philosophy major, very careful. I stood at the back of the pit. I, you know, I kind of just picked at orders that were, you know, a little bit off of value. Mm -hmm. And the first year I started on my own, I made one hundred and twenty-five thousand, then one hundred and fifty, then one hundred seventy-five, and then two hundred thousand, then two hundred thousand, then two hundred thousand. I was stuck. Right. <clears throat> I was stuck at two hundred thousand dollars. So. I stood on the edge of the pit, excuse me, <clears throat> and I heard that voice that said, Rich, you're only worth $200,000. And in that moment, I was done with that voice. And I went and stood right in the best spot. Now, on a pit, and there's no pits anymore like this anymore. But, right, right. You know, in the pit, it, the best spots were 
were commandeered by the people with the most capital, the meanest, the most socially uh, aware. I mean, the, the most gravitas, you know, the, that pit was commanded by the heavy hitters. Sure. And so I went and stood in the best spot in the pit. So everyone else kept around before 630 bell. Everyone kept coming in. And the guy who always stood there looked at me, stood beside me little bit of chatting, looking at the clock. Just before the bell went off, he tapped me on the shoulder, said, okay, time to move over. Really? I didn't, I didn't move. He started pushing. I started pushing. <laughs> the whole pit went, holy mackerel, and just stood back because they knew what was going to happen. Right, right. Because Rich Friesen had violated all the norms on the floor. So the exchange staff said, you guys get into a fight, $10,000 fine for each of you. I stood my ground. I pretended I had concrete boots. The The bell went off, and an options opened in a whole bunch of series. So mm -hmm. every series, I went, buy 50, sell you 20. I'll, I'll buy them, buy them. I just went, at the pit thought Rich Friesen had gone berserk. <laughs> Bananas today. Yeah, <laughs> but I went, I went on to make many times that $200,000 internal limit. Mm. So I used that money then to start a trading firm. And what was interesting is some of the, about a third of the traders I hired would use my system and just make money and make sure. good money. A third of them would be okay, not great, but okay. And a third of them just couldn't make it. Okay. So it occurred to me, what if, what if the traders that weren't doing well had that same internal limitation? And that started me on the whole path to the book and to working with people uh, to expand their their vision of what they can do and who they are. You know, what was it, though? You got out of bed, okay? Mm -hmm. You drove across the Golden Gate. You stood outside, but what was it that moved you in that moment? Boy, you asked the hardest question and the best question <laughs> because that is really what my career then went to, how do we take something that was kind of accidental, that voice, and how can we make it intentional? Mm -hmm. And so I'm, so as I working with traders, I, I said, okay, how can we make this intentional? And I brought in a hypnotherapist. And what we discovered was like, for some of the traders, it was one of them was uh, from dirt poor poverty in West Virginia. Very smart, very hardworking. And as soon as he started to make some money, he would give it back. And under hypnosis, he came up with, I'll lose my family. Because he had, in West Virginia, cousins and uncles that would get together for barbecues. And, mm -hmm. you know, nobody had much money. But the family unit was, was just right. was the prime value that he had. And if he made money... He would lose that, or at least right. that was his absolutely. mental concept. So I lived that, yeah, absolutely. Did you tell oh, me yeah. about that? Oh, I bet absolutely. I just I grew up with a father who worked on the line at General Motors, mm -hmm. and he always would brag about that he could tell his son. Now, my father's my best friend, like mm -hmm. best friend in the world. We're super close, but he could he could tell his friend that he couldn't get him something, and that would be okay with it, right? So I needed a new pair of wrestling shoes. Oh, I can't mm -hmm. get these. But but I would be okay with it. So that really built up my identity. Early 2000s, I printed money, made $3 million. And uh, basically, uh, just my, my mentors, you know, were like, hey, watch your money, do this, this. And then by 09, it was gone. It was just, mm -hmm. I didn't have the identity or feel yes. like I had the worth to yes. hold on to it. Right? But I have to back you up, though. Just, I'm sorry, Richard, because I'm super intrigued. You haven't answered me, though, of what got you out of bed and drove across the Golden Gate Bridge. What was that internal dialogue with yourself? Because I'm super curious on this. So. Yeah, that is a mystery to me still. Okay. In other words, no, that fair voice, it, you know, it, everything was gelling. Every Rich was just finally done with the struggle. And Love finally, it. that voice said, Rich, you're not worth 200000 that voice was trying to hold on because I knew I was ready to bust yeah. out. So how can we make that intentional? And that's where we have a whole bunch of exercises that yeah. that uh, listen to those deeper voices. What we have is the golden key process. First is awareness. 
And in my private coaching, what was we drill down to all the voices that we have. And I have a methodology for listening to all those different voices, eliciting their what they want. And it turns out that they all have a positive intent. Yeah. That 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 limiting voice had a positive intent to keep me safe. And what you just said, Scott, about you know, not being worthy or not being able to step into wealth. And that's so as a result, the money disappeared. Well, that's sure. repeated by wealthy football players who don't have enough money to retire. Yes. Uh, lottery winners, you know, this is repeated. So the question is, do we have, and, and the, the, I've never had one client come to me and say, Rich, I'm not ready for wealth. They always imagine it. They they can think about it. And about 70% of my clients do not have the internal identity, belief systems, and behaviors to maintain wealth. Right. And this is where we go. How do we recreate that? Right. I notice a lot of people that do get that wealth because there a lot of them work as a chip on their shoulder, right? Instead mm -hmm. of really from a place of service. And you know, the 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 theory of relativity comes into play. Once you make money, everyone's your relative, right? And you feel obligated <laughs> to to give them the a little piece of what you have. But so Richard. I have to ask, are you, do you work one-on-one -on -one with clients? Yes, we have. Uh, I work with groups. I work one-on-one -on -one with clients. Um, we have a f online course. In fact, what I'll do is I'll give your listeners the, a free access to the course, sure. and okay. I'll tell them where to go to get that. Beautiful. So uh, we have a number of different ways uh, to do that. Okay. And I want to comment on what you brought up because it's so important. Hmm. You know, our culture today and the belief systems around money and wealth and meaning, it used to be there was a pretty good sense of uh, cohesion around definitions. Right. But now we have, you know, a huge political divide. We have sure. a divide around taxes. We have a divide around wealth. And I'm not going to comment on that except to say it, yeah. that we internalize that conflict. Sure. Oh, my gosh, if I'm wealthy, I'm going to become an asshole. Right. Yeah. Well, I should say that. No, you're fine. Fuck it. We're good, man. We're good. <laughs> well, I appreciate that. And it's yeah. true because the, the entertainment world and whatnot, and again, I don't go political or really religious on this on this show, but the entertainment world will put movies out where it's cool to be poor, like say Titanic. Oh, yeah. Titanic is the worst um, movie for mindset. Like, okay, mm -hmm. it's cool to go down below deck and drink beer and all the stuff, but it's snobby to hang out with the, the people that have worked their life to provide the jobs for the people that are below deck. And uh, that's where I was stuck as well with, with, with my mindset. But you mentioned three, the, the golden key process has three things. One's awareness. What's the other two? Well, the next one much. is acceptance. Okay. In other words, if I am aware of a repeated behavior that doesn't serve me, and then I try to discipline, I beat myself up. I say, I shouldn't do it. Well, that the awareness is going to shut down. But if I can say, well, I'm really aware that I have a $200,000 limit. Fascinating. Holy mackerel. I'm right. going to assume it has a positive intent. I'm going to accept it. I'm going to listen to that voice. So it's awareness, acceptance, and then it becomes agency. So in other words, if we can be aware constantly from a higher level of what's going on, then eventually that awareness can develop agency that we can start rather than making our decisions from our subconscious routines, we can start making decisions from a higher level self that that is meaningful, meets our goals, and gets us to where we want to go. Wow. Wow, that, that, that's amazing. So when you're starting to work with you know, clients one on one, Richard. If you don't mind sharing some of your secret sauce sure. in that discovery conversation, they haven't really hired you yet, but you're really trying to find that blind spot that they have. What 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 is some of your secret sauce and help them find that blind spot? We can demonstrate it, or I can talk about it. Which would you prefer? Let's talk about it, just because we let our time constraints. Yeah, maybe we, we'll we do, do another do. part two. Okay, so what I do is. I'm, it's all my clients now are on Zoom because they're all over the world. Understood. And so I I ask to make sure I can see their face. And for me, the, the clues that are most important are the physiology. We lie to ourselves. We lie with words, words, we all sorts of things. We try to impress people. But what I watch for is physiology, you know, lips, cheeks, jaw. And 
and that tells me a lot of truth and it's like the the opening the door so they'll be talking and i'll say i notice that you're tighten your lips when you say xyz mm. so tighten them some more mm, tighten them some more mm. how does it feel when you tighten them i feel anxious what else is going on my stomach is tight tighten your stomach more Ooh, like this and yeah. now give your tight stomach a voice I hate being here. I'm afraid of what's going to happen. Whatever they say come up. There we're getting to some truth by going through the physiology. And then what we do is, is I'll say something like, and this is a you know an hour or two long process. So sure, we're really absolutely. truncated in here. And I'll say, how old do you feel right now? And the answer usually comes between four and eight years old. I'm four years old. What's going on with little Bob? Oh, I'm hiding under the bed because my dad came home drunk. I could hear him slam the door. I know he's drunk, and I know he's going to beat me. Oh, wow. my God. So what we're doing now is finding out not only through physiology, the subconscious belief systems, but the how that's locked into our body. Right. So we can say, okay, that behavior that you're doing as trading or as an entrepreneur, as a leader, that is can't comes from a positive intent, hiding from your dad to save yourself. Is that sure. right? Yeah. Wow. So once we recognize the positive intent of it, then we can I can talk to that part that protected that little boy or that little girl. And then we can say, How would you like to do a better job? Wow. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, no, that's condensing a lot, and, no, and it, it, it doesn't give the richness. But rather than trying to discipline, willpower, change our behavior, we look to accept those all those voices, those parts of ourselves that haven't been heard. And sometimes it's it just brings tears to my own sure. eyes when, when there's a voice from the past that is finally says, oh, thank you for hearing me. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. That's you know what I love about it, Richard, is that you being a military guy, right? And and doing some time in hard target situations and stuff, it's like it's like stress testing, is what we would do. We put ourselves mm -hmm. in situations yep. where it was very uncomfortable in living. And yes. I love it that you took take them there with your fantastic protocol. Because not many people could do that with people. Okay. I just know. I know I can't as a coach, because I, I, I think that leans to me a little bit more therapy than mm -hmm. than coaching mm -hmm. but it's fantastic and i and i have to ask you when you're starting to work with these people is there any good question that you wish that they would ask you but never do no i it's if asking a question is like seeking advice from me mm -hmm. and i don't give advice okay you gotcha. know it's it's awareness. Okay. What's going on with you? Acceptance. Mm -hmm. Right. Agency. And how do we re build rapport with your values and your goals? And for me, it's just helping them elicit what is already there. Just like I had that voice in the middle of the night. How can we help them find their voices intentionally? Because if I give advice... And there's still that part there that is protecting them for some other reason or from the past. That advice then now becomes a struggle. Oh, I should do this. Rich said I should do this. Oh, I didn't do it. Damn. Mm. Oh, I'm a fuck. I'm I'm a screw. No, up. you're fine. Yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> um, I don't I don't even. I'm a coach. I'm not a consultant. Yeah. Because I've I've tried to consult before, and people are like, oh, Fergie gave me this stupid shit. And it didn't work. But if mm -hmm. I, I just believe that everyone knows what they want, they just don't know how to talk themselves into it, right? And the problem or challenge that they have resides in front inside them, and so does the re, you know what they need, the remedy as well. That's what I feel that I'm good at of getting out of them. And I think we do it in in certain ways that are parallel, but also perpendicular as well. That I won't touch some of the stuff you do. So, Richard, have you seen the movie Back to the Future? Yes. All right. Let's get that DeLorean with Marty McFly. Let's go back to the double deuce, the 22 year old Richard. Okay. What kind of knowledge nuggets might you drop on him? Maybe not so much change too much, but to maybe shorten the learning curve, blast through or level up, maybe just a little bit. Yeah. Quicker. Wow. 
I feel a rush of emotion as I think about that. Love it. I think about that 22 year old, so naive. I grew up very religious. My father was a preacher. I went to Wheaton College, which is a very protective yeah. uh, Christian school west of Chicago. Mm -hmm. I was expected to go in into the pat and become a pastor myself. And I it's so totally naive as to the world and what was going on, relationships, sexuality. And I think I would just put my arm around him, Jesus, and say, You're okay. Love it. Yeah. You're okay yeah. as you are. You have a lot to learn. You were very protected. There was a, there's, you had a, a big a hole in, I had a big hole in my heart that I was trying to fill in all sorts of different ways when what I really needed was for someone just to put their arms around me and say, you're okay. That's beautiful. That's so transparent. And, and thank you for sharing that, Richard. And so then how would you want your dash remember that little line in between your incarnation date and your expiration date your life date and death date hopefully it's way down the road but how does richard want his dash remember there on the tombstone oh if i could invite people more people to rapport with themselves with the parts of themselves with money with success and wealth and especially with our cultural trends today that is becoming more and more challenging and so if I can create that and invite, create a model and a picture and a vision for people to step into success and feel really good about it. For example, I reframe, I have a dozen exercises around money, wealth, meaning, yeah. and one of them is called certificates of appreciation. Mm. So Scott, if you do something for me, I give you not money, but certificates of appreciation right yeah if i do right. something for you you give me certificates of appreciation now like everyone's it. going to say well there's cheating there's fraud there's robbery yes all there is all that and i'm not diminishing that right but right right the more cert this is what's going to floor a lot of people and their their hackles are going to raise and they're going to yell at you for having me on <laughs> The more certificates of appreciation that you collect honestly by delivering value, the more value you have delivered to the world. Yes. Yeah, so that's the, so freaking true. It, yeah. People are not open to reciprocation it, it, that I see a lot. They want to give, 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 which I do until it hurts mm -hmm. so good. But I'm like that plant that sits in my window that my cats like to knock over all the time where, <laughs> you know, the, uh, we breathe out carbon dioxide that that plant breathes it in it breathes out yeah. oxygen. I do it. Yeah. So I love that the certificates of the more you accept, the more you give and the more like lack of better term successful and better you feel. And that's in the further way you go. I love how you put that and you put it in such a delicate way <laughs> that actually people will be like, Oh, I can't get mad at that. That's beautiful, man. That's yeah. Awesome. And so it's a total reframe from money as wealth and steal. You know, there's the one pie model. And the mm -hmm. one pie model says, if I have more, you have less. Oh my God, those wealthy people have so much money. Yeah. Well, there is a limited supply of, of currency at any given time, but there's no limit on the value we can deliver to each other. And yeah. as a result, the value I deliver to you and the certificates of appreciation you give to me does not only not take away from others, but may create a model for other people to deliver more and more value. That's beautiful. So if we think about that, then we, we can go to how do I deliver value? Well, I need skills. I need abilities. You mentioned earlier about you know people working uh, and providing services. So how can I deliver value in a way that you value it? In other words, I can't say, Scott, you should value X, Y, Z. I'm going to give it to you. Gull darn wow. it. Take it. No, right. it's I need to really have empathy with you and understand what you value, be able to communicate that value in marketing and being able to deliver so that the certificates of appreciation you give me are actually in appreciation. I love it. 
I love it, Richard. Richard, I love this. And as we move things along a little bit, what is Richard's definition of a life well lived? Oh, my gosh. I am so fortunate. Uh, the what life well lived is my family. Uh, six grandkids were, in fact, I'm leaving for this Saturday up to Bend, Oregon for a snow week. Uh, all the kids will be there, all the grandkids. They all love each other. I tell you, that is tops. I have a vision of creating more rapport with and giving people the ability to have more rapport with themselves and the world, mm -hmm. their finances. And that's why I wrote the book. And I've got, you know, <laughs> I got three more books that I want to write. So I'm 75. And the question is, wow, can I stay can. healthy now that I can? Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah. Can I get done uh, what I want to do? And if I look back, the reason, well, I, let me rephrase that. The anchors around me prevented me from starting this earlier. Mm. And so my encouragement to your listeners is find out what those survival mechanisms are, those anchors, those pieces, those beliefs, those behaviors that are holding you back. So you're not at 75 cent. Oh, I can start now. <laughs> yeah, I feel you, man. Wow. That's that. Thank you again for the transparency and the honesty. And squad, we're going to take my good friend Richard Freeze in through our leveling up lightning round just as soon as we get back from thanking our sponsors and affiliates. Time to shine today, podcast varsity squad. We are back with my good friend who has just dropped some serious knowledge nuggets on me. I probably have at least three pages of notes, squad. I'm sure you do as well. But Richard, hopefully one day we'll meet up, you know, maybe talk about a few of these questions, 15, 20 minutes. But here, and I hold you to this, you have five seconds to answer them with no explanations. And they can all be answered that way. Are you ready to level up? I'm ready to level up. Let's do this. Richard, what is the best leveling up advice you've ever received? When I was seven years old, a man said to me, I was working in the church basement, sweeping up, and he said, Rich, you're doing a good job. Love it. Kindness. 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 Love it. Share one of your personal habits that contributes to your success. A long-term vision that just keeps me moving towards it. Love it. <laughs> Love it. So you see me walking down the street or we meet somewhere. You're like, man, Fergie looks like he's in his doldrums a little bit. What book maybe that was gifted to you or recommended to you would you give to me? Oh, my gosh. Drawing a blank. Um, the, the book that has made the biggest difference to me is The Book of Not Knowing by Peter Ralston. Great book. It, great book. Great book. Okay. What's your most commonly used emoji when you text? And just a smiley face. Beautiful. Nicknames growing up? None. <laughs> Chess, checkers, or Monopoly? Chess. Beautiful. Go-to ice cream flavor? Chocolate. All right. There's a, there's a sandwich called the Nun Freezing. No nickname, Freezing. Build that sandwich for me, brother. Oh, it's toasted. It's got lots of just soaking in butter and mayonnaise. It's yeah. you you have to eat it over a sink. It has cheeses and meats, and the bread is not just an ordinary bread. It's it's this bread that was baked that is so flavorful and it has a crunchy crust. Yeah, I let you go long on that one because that was just sounding too good, man. <laughs> <laughs> Favorite charity and or organization you like to give your time or money to? Uh free market uh and uh, promoters of capitalism, uh, Pacific Research Institute, to Cato uh, Institute. Beautiful. Thank you for saying all that, too. Best decade of music, 60s, 70s, 80s, or 90s? Oh, uh, Beach Boys. 60s, baby. I love <laughs> yeah, it. 60s, I love boys. it. <laughs> so, you know, Richard, my friend, how can we find you? Uh, Conversations.money and yeah. dot, conversations.money. And if they go to slash uh uh what was it shine uh, shine slash shine okay. that's what was it uh we have a course that is we'll offer free that they can work through all the exercises in the book beautiful thank you for for doing that and you hear that squad go to conversations.money slash shine 
Sure. And let's talk a little bit about the, the private conversations with money. We can't go too long on this just for time constraints, Richard, mm -hmm. but get a little bit into the book and what it can provide to people. Cause I'm going to do a good, a book giveaway that um, let me see, we're going to have the first person that puts, um, let me, let me look here. Where are my notes? Let's see the first person that puts awareness, acceptance, and agency, the, those three words in any post, I don't care if it's Pinterest, Instagram, LinkedIn, Twitter, uh, text it to me, 561-440-330. The first people, three, five people that put those in there, I'm going to buy a book personally on Time to Shine Today's Dime and mail it out to you. So can we get uh, a little bit into the book? Sure. If we look at my own progress and my own resistance to living a full and uh, productive life, <clears throat> I take a character, Joe, who is struggling. He's a journalist. And he is conflicted about wealth and meaning. So rather than just giving you a, here's what you should do, <laughs> advice, I take him through a struggle with the character called money of every issue every client has ever had. So it's a parable. So, <clears throat> yes. Beautiful. Exactly. Freaking love them. Yeah, I'm writing one myself. This, I love this. I'm buying it today, squad. I'm ashamed <laughs> to say I haven't yet. But go ahead. Sorry. So it, he money gives him exercises to help uncover, like that voice that I had that said I wasn't worthy. There's exercises that take you through almost all the resistance and all the issues my clients have, so that you not only just read about them at a higher, you know, cognitive level, sure, but you experience them viscerally. So good, I love this. And Richard, do me one last solid. And leave us with one last knowledge nugget we can take with us, internalize, and take action on. Mm -hmm. Take a deep breath and just notice your physiology. I'm going to do it right now. Because that's where a lot of the truth is locked up. And have compassion for yourself, for that stomach, for the tight shoulders, for the jaw, for the tight chest, whatever it is. Have some compassion for yourself as you learn about what is locked up in your body. Wow. And squad, we this, this is deep for me because I wish I would have met Richard years ago because um, he would have unlocked and, and a lot of the barriers wouldn't have been there. I and mean, this dude grew up a glass blower, right? And he had a, he had internal you know, limitations going on. He's not smart enough, not good enough. And in a voice that said, <laughs> you're only worth 200K. You know, but he made that voice a little bit intentional you know, to the point where, you know, he got out of his bed. He goes across the Golden Gate Bridge. He squared off with the big dog there. He grew the balls to do that. He had the courage to stand in his pit. He wants the courage for you to stand in your own pit. Violate that protocol sometimes. You know, he explained to us, not in detail, because I want you guys to dig in and to Richard's, uh, you know, information, but the, the golden key process of awareness, acceptance, and agency. You know, he wants you to build or help you build rapport with value and your goals. Help find your intentionality in your voice. And Richard's someone that I've noticed listens with all his senses, right? He's looking at the physiology. He's looking at your blinking, which way your eyes are going, your tightness of your lips. I believe he really listens with his neck. That's what I call it. He's really leaning in, you know, and listening with his neck. You know, he, in times of challenge, you know, console yourself. Remind yourself that you're okay. You know, and, you know, if you, th there's one, there's a note here that I have that went a little long is, you know, if you have more, you have more. There's no limit on the value we can deliver to each other. You know, yeah, provide boy. value of things that are valuable to you. And he calls them the certificate of appreciations. I love it. He wants you to really look and see what anchors are holding you back. And if you don't know them, let me make a warm introduction to my good friend, Richard here. You know, I really believe that, you know, Someone that says a life well lived after everything he's did is hanging out with six grandkids and going skiing and staying alive so he can keep planting trees that he's probably never going to sit in the shade of, fellas and, and ladies out there. You know, lastly, he wants us to take a breath. Notice your physiology, that your truth is really locked up in there. And if the truth hurts, have compassion for that person. And again, let me make a warm introduction to Richard. Let me make sure you pick up his book. I'm not going to lie on Kindle right now. It's really cheap. But if you want to get the paperback, 
it's pretty affordable as well. So get out there and buy it. And the first people that put those three words, awareness, acceptance, and agency, and any post, text it to me, email it to me or my team. I'm going to get a book out to you, the first five people. So, you know, my good friend Richard levels up his health. He levels up his wealth. He's hungry, hungry yet he's hungry. He's humble, yet he's hungry. I really appreciate you coming on. You earned your varsity letter at Time to Shine today. Thank you so much. I absolutely love your guts, Richard. Scott, you have asked the most difficult questions. You've pushed me on them. And that has produced, I think, the best conversations. So my appreciation for doing that and your summary was better than any summary I could possibly do. So thank you. I love it, man. There's so many things I'm borrowing and stealing from you today. Thank you, brother. Take them all. I love it. I've got some my certificate of appreciation your way as well. Love you, man. Talk soon. Bye-bye. Bye.